Still feels good to be ACC tournament champions here in 2023, hoping to carry that and the momentum of a nine-game winning streak into March Madness as Duke travels south to Orlando to take on Oral Roberts. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils. Your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on this Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. Happy Pi Day to all those math heads out there excited about March 14th, excited to talk about everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics here with you, talking about the Duke men's basketball team preparing for another run in the NCAA tournament and so much more. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to our podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts. Also, make sure you check out us on YouTube to watch the show each and every day. On today's show, let me welcome in my good pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast, who joins us each and every week. And Josh, we're going to talk about Duke in the NCAA tournament, but I start here. We tried to warn people. The last time you and I were on the program together, we titled the episode that Duke was the most dangerous team in the ACC. They proved our point all throughout the weekend. Hope you're doing well, man. Yeah, doing great and doing doing really good. After the end of the ACC tournament, and we what a dominating people! We tried to warm them. Yeah, what a dominating performance. I mean, really. I mean, if you think back of the path that Duke took, and I mean, it wasn't an easy path. You know, if you just said ahead of time, you're going to have to beat Pitt, you're going to have to beat Miami, you're going to have to beat Virginia, and uh, man, poor Pitt. I mean, we came, we came ready to play on Thursday, and then beat a really, really good Miami team um, Friday, and then of course that that grinded out game Saturday. You know, we can talk about however much you want to talk about, but at the end of the day, John Shire in his first season. Uh, wins the ACC tournament ch- uh, championship, and uh, Kyle Filipowski. If if people around the country didn't know about Kyle Filipowski, uh, they know about him now after that tournament. Yeah, really impressive game for Duke to win that title against Virginia. If you're watching us on YouTube, we've got the box score up for you once again. A ten point victory for Duke, as we discussed on yesterday's show. Not the greatest offensive display of basketball from both teams, right? A fifty nine forty nine yep. game is not going to steal headlines by any stretch of the imagination, but it got the job done. It gave a title to the Duke Blue Devils, and Kyle Filipowski was such a big reason why, well-deserving of the ACC Tournament MVP honors. Like, it's the grandest time of year, and you're getting the finest performances from Flip, which is exactly what Duke wanted. I think it's it's interesting to point out, too, you mentioned this being an ugly offensive game uh, for Saturday night in the championship game, and you're right. But I think it's really uh, important that Duke fans understand that the first two games in the ACC tournament that we played, uh, we scored, what, 85 and 96 points. And so uh, we put points on the board against both Pitt and Miami. And then we proved that in a 24-hour turnaround, we can beat Virginia and we beat them at their game. Let's be real. Our defense was as good or better than Virginia's defense Saturday night. We held them. They were so frustrated, could not get shots off. And when they did get open looks, it's like they were so rushed that they didn't hit them. Um, our defense on Saturday night, you know, was as good as our offense was on Thursday and Friday. And so if you're a Duke fan and you watch those three games, I feel like you really saw the the Duke team win in two different ways, both with the defense leading and with the offense leading. Yeah, and you look at how productive everybody was on the defensive end of the floor, right? Like Duke was so active stealing the basketball. Whitehead only played 15 minutes, and he walked away with four steals on the day, right? You've got Derek Lively, the second, blocking a few shots, contesting. I think the field goal percentage number 
is what's important to point out for this Duke team at 18.6 turnover percentage throughout the game. Like they really, really were active and making it hell out there for the Cavaliers in that title game. Yeah, and, and don't fail to mention Kyle Filipowski in the Virginia game. Two key uh, steals in the second half. Um, yeah. You know, uh, one of them get his hand in the passing lane. The other one uh, picking uh, someone's pocket on like a spin move. And so Kyle is an underrated defender as well. And, and you're right, this team, when and I say when they put their mind to it, I shouldn't say that. This team consistently uh, plays elite levels of defense. And when you can – when you have a starting lineup that includes Mark Mitchell as your like as your wing um, at like six nine or, or however tall he is, and then you can bring somebody like Derek Whitehead in to either go really big or to spare um, uh, Mark there on on the on the wing, we're an incredibly talented defensive squad. And you know when Derek Lively, who has obvious elite talent on defense, when he goes out of the game, and I understand it's a radically different feel with Ryan Young in the game. But for 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 what Ryan Young lacks in athleticism, you know he does get his body in there. He does box out. He does do some dirty kind of grind work down low as well. And so, man, I can't say enough about about how well this team has come together defensively. Super excited for what's going to happen with this Duke basketball team come March Madness. Now they get set for a run in the NCAA tournament as Duke will take on Oral Roberts. We're get, we will get to that matchup here in just a moment. Before we get out of here, though, in this conversation, Josh, we talked a good bit about Virginia, or excuse me, about Kyle Filipowski. Now it's time we talk about Jeremy Roach and oh, the man. play that he had throughout the week. Yeah, and and you, you're you definitely seeing the results of him staying for a third season. Um, I know, you know, whenever you're a four- or five-star uh, recruit, you're coming into Duke. I understand there's like this kind of underlying expectation that like I'm going to get out of here as quickly as I can go make my millions. And that's not been the case for Jeremy. But, man, I really I, – I hope Duke fans appreciate uh, what he has brought to the table this year in his leadership and the fact that he can legitimately go get a bucket. I mean, when he – when we need a bucket, Jeremy Roach can go find a bucket. And his leadership has just been incredible. <clears throat> I love the way Coach Shire – uh, even in, in the post game at the end of the uh, tournament, when he was uh, speaking with Holly Rowe on ESPN, he was quick to praise Jeremy to the extent that she even brought him up and interviewed him a little bit as well. I believe he's he's obviously earned the respect of all of his teammates, and um, and 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 you know, Coach Shire has done a good job. Not only has he taken Jeremy somewhat off the ball offensively, uh, which has helped him uh, to play off the ball, but he's also taken him off the ball defensively. He's let Proctor guard their best player on the on the wing. And I think that's just given Jeremy – he's just more in his comfort zone this year. And all credit to him and then also credit to the coaching staff for putting him in those positions. Which we absolutely – we love that so much. So let's talk about what Duke can do in March Madness in their first-round matchup against Royal Roberts and a whole lot more. And we'll do that after our first time out here on today's show. Lockdown Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. It is the number one sports betting app in America. I wouldn't recommend anything else to you. I love it that much. As it's now time for you to get your no sweat first bet for new customers up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, three-point shots drained, and so much more. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your first bet or no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, JJ Jackson alongside my pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks, the Section 17 podcast. Duke is the five seed in the East Regional heading to Orlando. What do you think? Well, I mean, as a local North Carolina product here, <laughs> uh, really, really hoping for that four seed, uh, really hoping for Greensboro. Um, and, you know, I think it's interesting, and I'm not here compl- to complain about the seeding, except that I'm about to complain about the seeding. Um, yesterday, the AP poll came out for the week 
and Duke was all the way up at number 12 in the Associated Press top 25. Um, and then you have us, and then the committee puts us as a five seed. We've won nine games in a row. Who are we kidding? We've won 10 games in a row, uh, if we're honest. Yeah. Uh, we've won 10 games in a row. Um, and I don't, I don't, there's no reason we shouldn't have been a four seed. And I think you could actually argue that we could have been that final three seed. Um, it's a weird bracket. Um, Evan Maya, you're familiar a little bit with Evan Maya. He's kind of like the young Ken Palm. He uses some different criteria there. Uh, but Evan Maya has Tennessee, who's the four seed in our, in our bracket right above us. They're actually ranked number four in the nation in his, on his website. Duke is ranked number 11 in the nation, and we're the five seed. Marquette is our two seed. They are ranked like 15th or 14th. And then the three seed is Kansas State. They're ranked 36th in Evan Maya. So Holy it's a God. really odd bracket that Duke finds themselves in. Obviously, it's setting up a Sweet 16 matchup if we get there, uh, a rematch with Purdue. Um, obviously, Duke was just not ready to play and was not – we weren't Duke at that time of the season when we got blown out, and rightfully so, by Purdue. Um, so it'll be interesting. It's an interesting to draw that five seed. Obviously, that 5-12 upset um, is always a possibility. Um, in that same AP poll uh, that came out yesterday, Oral Roberts was 27th. They almost got in the top 25. So that shows you that you know not only do I feel like we are really, really, really highly uh, or low seat or I guess – high seated or low seated, whatever you look at it. We we are being undervalued. They are also being undervalued. I guess yeah. that's the best way of looking at it. So it's gonna be a tough one. We're only what is it four and a half, I think the odds have started out at four and a half or something like that. And so Duke's in for it. Duke's in for it. If we get if we go a long ways in this tournament, we will earn it. No doubt. Yeah. No, I'm nervous already and it's gonna be that way up until tip off on Thursday night when Duke takes on Oral Roberts. I want to talk about this game uh, in much more detail as we continue throughout the week and that sort of thing. Let's go back to Selection Sunday for yeah. so many and watching it on CBS as they unveil the bracket as they do each and every year. It is amazing to me what ESPN is able to do simultaneously at the same time. They don't have rights yep. to, the, to the bracket themselves, but they pretty quickly are able to update it after CBS makes the public announcement for the very first time. So, to, I, I talked about this on yesterday's show, but watching the bracket come out, Duke's the five seed. Then you want to go over to ESPN for their bracketology special to listen to what Billis and those guys have to yeah. say. And Billis said it himself mm-hmm. that to him, Duke was a three seed. Like you do not have Duke lower than that. Surprised that they landed on the five line. And in so many ways, it's a disservice to the other teams that Duke is playing that you wouldn't perceive a five seed to be as good as Duke. So, of course, yeah. that's making you feel a little bit better about Duke's chances, but I'm right there with you. I'm terrified of the 5-12 matchup, and this Oral Roberts team is pretty good. Yeah, you know, you expect um, if you're on a roll like Duke is, uh, all your advanced metrics and advanced stats have you as the number one team in the ACC. You just won the ACC tournament. You would obviously not expect Virginia to be ranked higher than you or seated higher than you. Uh, going into the tournament, you also would expect your first round game to be, a, you know, not that you're going to take it easy, but you, you would expect that game to not be quite as challenging. And who knows? It might not be. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, starting for sure from the second round, I mean, it's, it's Tennessee who like if they were not in Duke's little pod of the bracket, I would have Tennessee probably making it pretty far. I know they lost a point, their point guard uh, to, in, to an injury, and so that's going to hurt them a little bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're solid. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, like I said, I know you're going to break down Oral Roberts later and throughout the week. But at the end of the day, they've got a really good point guard, and they got a really tall big man, and they shoot, and so. Yeah. It's a challenge for the Duke defense. I mean, whenever you're seven foot five and you can shoot a three, that's I don't I don't care where you play. Uh, that that's that's solid. So yeah, and, and that's Connor Vanover who yeah. played at Arkansas to start his career. So he played in the SEC for three yeah. years. He's gone up against big guys. Duke did see Edie earlier this season, but Vanover uh, much more slim than than our our big fella Zach Edie is yeah. in a different level of game uh, that's going to be asked of the Duke bigs. So. 
Really exciting matchup in this one um, in Orlando, of all places. Yeah. Expect Duke to have a good turnout there in Florida because Duke travels incredibly well. Oral Roberts out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't know that very many Oral Roberts fans are going to be making the trip for that one outside of the players' families and, and whatnot. So it should very much so be a, a home-type atmosphere for Duke. Yeah, and, you know, obviously Duke fans would want Greensboro. So a couple of things about that. I mean, first of all, Orlando's easy easy in and out as far as flying down there, getting getting there. It's not, not difficult to do. So I would expect, you know, fans to travel and then obviously local fans down there. And then we do get the, the looking forward, looking ahead. Should we make it out of the first weekend, we will be in New York City. And so that will be uh, basically – you know, Madison Square Garden is basically a home game uh, for Duke if that were to be the case. And so that's 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 the good part um, of the way things are shaken out is that we did stay here in the East and we will be in New York if we go to the Sweet 16. So that would be that would be really cool. And it would be, you know, I probably won't do it, but man, it'd be tempting to just uh, to try to get up there and, and get, to, <laughs> get to those games. But uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm sure every team looks at their bracket, JJ. Every every team looks at their bracket and probably goes, man, we really got a tough draw. Like that is what it is. It is the tournament. Like you know what I mean. Every team, it's not like any team has an easy draw in the tournament. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, speaking of our bracket too, if you want to, uh, if we want to mention this, I mean, we have Kentucky and Michigan State on the other side of the bracket. Of course, with the two seed Marquette, the three seed Kansas State. But you got Michigan State and Kentucky sitting over there. That I know they've had different, you know down years but still when I mean, this 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 uh east region is pretty pretty wild it is and we know we'll see kentucky and michigan state with us each and every year in the champions classic still yeah. moving forward and so there they are all in the same region for sure so definitely interesting to look at all these particular matchups that could be in play and you're right there, there's got to be conversations amongst every fan base about how difficult this east region is or wherever you end up but somehow, some way, each and every year, if you're a Duke fan, much like me, you're going to talk yourself into how this Duke team can make a run to a national title. Because, again, it's an elite basketball program with tons of postseason success. And a head coach in John Shire who's got a little swagger and moxie about him right now. What are you thinking of John Shire these days, Josh? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to figure out the best way of wording this. John Shire has been patient with this young roster in a way that his predecessor may not have been. Let me just say it like that. Uh, a player like Derek Lively II could have possibly been pushed out of the rotation completely because of the frustrations of, of December and early January. John has patiently seen these guys improve. He has given them chances after chance after chance to get better. And this season they've responded by doing just that and getting better. Um, you know, we, we've laughed about, you know, hoping John would like lose it on a ref and, and get a technical, you know, I don't, I just don't think that's who he is. I, I think he's a laid back guy. I think he's a player's coach, but he's also not, he's also not afraid to start Ryan Young in December and January over Derek Lively. He's not afraid. I mean, look what he's doing right now. He's not afraid to bring Derek Whitehead off the bench. And so, yeah. like, I, I have a lot of respect for John. And I think the hire of Jay Lucas has been so important to this program. We defend the pick and roll uh, properly, which we have not done in 10 years. We defend the pick and roll right. I don't know if that's Jay. I don't know if that's John. I have no clue who that is. Um, uh, implementing that, but the way that we that we stay and we don't switch everything and we don't get caught in a bunch of mismatches uh, like that, I really love the way we play defense. I love the way our offense most of the time has good movement and stays uh, – the ball stays moving, the people stay moving. Um, I've got nothing but positive things to say about John. And, and at the end of the day, I know some Duke fans had some questions and I know even into January, we had there was a lot of questions from Duke fans. I would see it on social media, see it under the comments of the official, uh, you know, Duke Twitter and things like that. But man, any Duke any Duke fan right now uh, that that has paid attention to basketball um, has 
can have nothing but positive things to say about John. And how cool is it, man, that his parents are at every game and like, well, you get to see his wife over awesome. there just enjoying yeah. it. It's, it's so cool, man. I'm really happy for him. You're watching and listening to Locked On Blue Devils here today. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. All right, quick plug for your show, Josh. What you guys have going on? Well, spring ball is starting up uh, for football here in just a few days. And so we're going to be out at spring ball um, taking notes, getting ready um, for Duke football season to kick back off. And we'll see some transfers uh, that are in town. We'll see some freshmen in the 2023 class that have enrolled early. And then we'll talk about it. We'll do a definitely do a wrap up uh, there um, sometime in the month of April, probably at the end of the spring game, the blue white game there on the 22nd. And so the section 17 podcast, we bring you in-depth look at Duke football. And um, so, yeah, follow us along anywhere you can find you listen to podcasts. You can find it section 17. Uh, leave us a rating and review if we've earned it as JJ asked for here. And uh, we will be launching on YouTube um very soon and so we're looking forward to that as well so we got a lot of things in the works for for our podcast i love it make sure you go check that out again the section 17 podcast with my good pal josh cox and a great crew that he's got there uh, on the show with him as well each and every week so uh let's keep talking about this matchup for duke oral roberts is the opponent of 512 matchup been a little bit since you've seen a five next to duke's name considering the success that Mike Krzyzewski had throughout his career so many years as one of the top seeds in the entire tournament. But Josh, if you were to give me three things to put you on the spot here, Mm -hmm. the three things Duke must do to, to win against Oral Roberts, what would that be? Okay. Well, number one, we have, well, number one on the offensive side of the ball, um, Kyle Filipowski is going to be matched up on a, someone that's six foot five. So the six, the seven foot five guys going to have to guard Derek Lively, I'm assuming. Um, and so Kyle Filipowski is going to have a much smaller defender on him. So my first key to the game is for Flip not to get early foul trouble, like charges or getting, you know, how sometimes he can get out of his game a little bit, trying to do too much. Uh, if he can play under control, he can, he can maximize that matchup. So I think that's number one. I think number two is defending the three point line. Um, that's really, I, I think I saw a stat as I've been kind of perusing and trying to figure out Oral Roberts that they shoot the, shoot the most threes out of pick and pop. Um, so when they're running pick and pick and roll, a lot of pick and pop for threes, I've got no, uh, reason to think Duke's not going to defend that. Well, we're going to be much taller than them. I mean, like Filipowski is seven foot tall. Six foot five it will be the, his matchup. Mark Mitchell, six foot nine, six foot five is going to be his matchup. Um, so I think that's important. So I'll give you Kyle Filipowski offensively, the Duke team in general, defending the three point line, the pick and pop. And then individually, you're going to have Tyrese Proctor, I'm assuming, matched up on, on Max. I, is it Abmas? I'm not exactly sure how to say his last name. Um, but he is their, the, he is the, the leader of that team. He is the best player on that team. And for the last six, six weeks or so, Tyrese Proctor has been given the best player on the other team that plays on the wing and he has done a phenomenal job. And so those are my keys uh, to Duke winning that game. Savage is a word that comes to mind lately for me when I think of Tyrese Proctor, yep. right? Just a, a, a savage out there on the floor. Uh, his swagger, how much he attacks the opposition and bringing it on the defensive end night in and night out. Yeah, you look at this one again, Duke and Oral Roberts coming up on Thursday. Uh, the ESPN Basketball Power Index gives the Blue Devils a 79.8% chance to win the matchup. But again, you got to play well. Shots have to fall from the outside. You got to protect the three point line. Those are the things that are important for Duke. And I'm right there with you. One of my number one things is let's find a way to keep Kyle Filipowski in a rhythm because as Duke yeah. goes, he goes. And uh, really, really important that he plays well. And I will say this I, I, I've, we've bragged on Oral Roberts, and rightfully so. Like I said, they're 27th in the AP this this uh, week, all the all those types of things. But when you look at the strength of schedule and who they've played, they played Houston earlier in the year. They lost by 38 points. Um, you know, they won their conference tournament, but they, I, I forget who they played, like Kent State or somebody. I, I forget who it was. And, like, they're, like, number 200 and something. I forget what it is. So, like, the level of play that, they, that they've been facing is not good. Um, and so, at the end of the day, man, if you're asking me if I was – if I was going to throw money out, I'm taking that over. Absolutely. I think we're, I think we're, 
going to win by 15 to 20 points. I mean, or maybe more than that. Who knows? Um, because I really believe in this team. I had a guy text me, a Duke fan text me, who's filling out his, filling out his bracket today. He said, is there any reason to think that we can't make it to the Final Four? And I said, man, I have a hard time ever saying this team is going to lose. We've won nine in a row. Like right now, I have a hard time saying Duke is going to take an L. And so that's kind of where I sit, especially with this first game. Was uh, you know, a lot of respect to Oral Roberts, but man, they're not playing ACC basketball, and this is going to be a whole different ball game for them. And hopefully, it ends up a lot like that Houston game, which was a thirty-eight point win for the Houston Cougars. So, yeah, I mean, you look at Oral Roberts again out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, four thousand student enrollment. They they have had tournament success previously, but playing in the Summit League, yep. here are the teams for you in the quarterfinals of their tournament this past week. They played North Dakota then St. Thomas, and then North Dakota State in their title game. And they defeated North Dakota State in the Summit League Championship game. They won 92-58. Okay. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the competition is just not that great. And you're right, they did get obliterated by uh, Houston earlier in the season. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm about, I'll put you on the spot. Have you filled out your bracket yet? I have not, actually, no. All right, I'm going to give you my final four. Okay, I'm ready for it. This way, that way, it's on record. Yes. All right, I'm gonna give you. I got. I gotta find it to make sure I give it to you right. So I I've got Duke in. I, def, I definitely have Duke in. Let's see here. I'm. I'm gonna. I had. I did two brackets. I'm gonna give you the one that I really believe in here. All right. So yeah, I got Duke. Um, come on now. There we go. All right, I have Duke, Arizona, Texas, UConn. Duke, like Arizona, that. Texas, UConn. I have Duke and Texas in the final with Duke winning. That's my Duke Homer bracket. I love that. We love Duke Homer brackets. I will yep. have one of those. Uh, at this point, I don't ever claim it to be a Duke Homer mm. bracket just because I believe in it that much each and every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, we said last week, Duke is the most dangerous team in the ACC. Let's make that a national statement that Duke is the most dangerous team in the country right now. I mean, my goodness, I wouldn't Listen, want to go up against them. If you're, if you're Oral Roberts, you're like, really? You know what I mean? If you're Tennessee, Jay Billis's point, yeah. Yeah, if you're Tennessee, you're like, man, how is that my our five seed? Like, right. they should be on the other end of that bracket as as a three seed. Like, to be honest with you, if you flipped Duke and Kansas State in this bracket, no one would have been mad. Not Kansas at all. State would not have been mad, I don't not think, if they looked at their seed, Ken Palm, right. their stuff being five seed, and Duke would have been like, okay, three seed, that's about where we need right. to be. Right. And we'd have been a little bit more excited because Marquette, I feel like, you know, much easier uh, Sweet 16 matchup for us than what Purdue would be. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think, anyway, we listen, like I said, man, we could sit there and we can be frustrated about the seeding because I am. I feel like we've earned more than that. But you can't do anything about it. You literally can't. You just got to go out and win the very next game, just like we've done for nine straight games. I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. I hope I'm not wrong right here, Josh. I hope that the next time you and I talk on this program that we're preparing for the Sweet 16, I, I hope that that happens, that we've got some Duke wins coming up. I think that can happen. I think that will happen. Uh, I just think Duke's playing really good basketball. So until we meet again next week, brother, appreciate the time as always. And let's go get some March Madness wins. All right, JJ, have a good week, man. Go Duke. That's Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 Podcast joining us here on today's program. That's going to do it for our show today. As always, make sure you follow and subscribe to our show for free wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us the five-star rating and review. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Make sure that you also subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you uh, get or watch YouTube, subscribe to our videos. Uh, that helps us out a whole lot. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.